Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm going to be responding to Day in the Life of a Dairyman, this video posted by 10th Generation Dairyman. And I'm switching it up a little bit, I'm on the webcam, which is unusual, but it's just so much easier this way. And I will say, this video was persistently in my suggested videos, probably because I researched dairy. I don't know. Now, I have not seen the video, which is going to make this fun. But just in case there's like a boring two minutes of something in the video, I'll skip ahead. So it's not going to be fully real time or, you know me, I like to research. So I might take like 10 seconds to look up something. And so I'm going to skip that for your viewing pleasure. I also want to mention, because it can be misconstrued this way, that this is never meant to be an attack on, you know, blue collar people, the working class people who are, you know, doing hard manual labor. I completely support that as a general thing. It's when animals get involved that it becomes different. And I did work on an organic farm in the summers when I was younger. And I will say it was hard work and udders don't have spikes like cucumbers do. I don't know, I'm, I'm joking, but let's go. Let's get into this. Okay, so right off the bat, the very first frame looks like one of those undercover factory farm videos. And so it's these conditions do not look great. It looks kind of like a dungeon, but we'll see. We'll see what's going on here. Hey guys, it is Wednesday, June 5th. Time to get started. Come on. Get up. This cow has been down due to horrible conditions. Now, I don't know. I mean, these look like small pens. Let me pause it for a better view. But I mean, look at that. I mean, there's, they obviously can't even turn around. I don't know what, exactly what's going on here. We're probably gonna see some milking soon, but uh, this this might be their feed troughs. Uh, either way, this is not, you know, your happy, happy pasture of free roaming cows. 10 seconds in. <laughs> All right, so it looks like he's cleaning the milking equipment. I will say the first time I went to a dairy when I was younger, it was like a, supposed to be the best dairy ever. And I was like imagining them hand milking all the cows. And then I get there and it's like these crazy giant machines with, you know, the iodine. That's where you get iodine, by the way, is what he's doing right now, probably. He's cleaning these machines, getting ready to. Uh, they put iodine as a disinfectant in these. That's why there's iodine in milk. And so people are like, oh, going vegan, you won't get iodine. Uh -huh, that's, the, that's the reason. But it kind of disturbed me. I was imagining people you know, hand milking these these cows, which obviously I, I disagree with now, but you know, the reality is if they were hand milking, then it'd probably be like $10 a gallon instead of whatever this guy's charging for his milk. Let's see what's going on. Oh my God. That was water, right? I don't even know what fluid that was. Is he drinking the milk or is he drinking like the watery runoff? Wait, I gotta back up like 10 seconds to that mystery fluid right there. So he's hooking it up. Is that just like really clear? It might just be the, the lighting or whatever. I think that is milk and he's drinking it. And that is gross. That is unpasteurized milk. Really quickly, uh, something about unpasteurized milk. I've mentioned this in the past. I believe from the CDC, I'll throw the paper up here. Unpasteurized milk, raw milk has 840 times the, the cause of illness than pasteurized milk. Not something you want to be drinking, and we'll get into uh, drinking normal milk in a second, but that's, you know, that's what he's doing, I think. Or he's drinking, like, <laughs> the cleaning fluid. I have no idea. Oh my god, let's keep this going. Yeah, I don't know how many cows there are, but uh, there seems to be a lot of cows here. This is, yeah, this is... Maybe they have a field they go in, maybe they don't. I'm gonna see what his operation's like. Hopefully it exposes more of it. But right now, you know, we're looking at a factory farm and this is not what you're imagining when you're drinking milk, probably. Milking again. I feel like he's taking the angle of, you know, those, those sort of viral or really well-viewed videos of that dude in the forest doing like, you know, like building a hut or like baking bricks naturally and he doesn't talk the whole time and it somehow it's, it's like really fascinating. He's definitely following that format. If I was the ultimate vegan, I'd be like, oh yeah, he's he's washing the pus off the floor right here. That's all just straight pus. No, I mean, <laughs> pus jokes, love it. Milking's done. Now I'm headed down to the heifer farm. We'll get these things fed. Things. 
Notice how he referred to them as things. They are not objects, bro. They're living sentient beings. I'm gonna try and be extra vegan in this video just for entertainment purposes. All right, I watched the heifers for a bit. Now let's mix feed. So there's a feed mixture there. It looks like uh, looks like it's a mixture maybe of of like forage crops, grasses, and maybe there's some type of grain in there. I can't really tell. But uh, people think, oh, just because it's grass means it's it's uh, totally healthy. I should say some of these factory farms are feeding their cows grass pellets. It's messed up. And then, of course, forages used way more of the water in California than 80% of the world's almonds that they grew in California. So this is not by any means like a low resource thing. That's natural right there. As if natural's uh, any metric of what's right. But still, look at that. I'm back home now, gonna go take breakfast quick, and then we'll get back to work. And behind him, those massive silos of, of feed just goes to show how big of an operation it is. I'm headed out here now. Just gotta put this in real quick. Oh. All right, so he just talked about a tractor for a little bit. I think there's gonna be some things that are just mundane I'm gonna skip through, so sorry for the cuts. We're getting close to the back of this second bunk here. And we have another one the same size as this on the other side over there that we'll be getting into in a couple weeks here. All right, so this looks like uh, massive stores of grain on the ground or feed on the ground that are covered from the weather with tires. So this year we're just planning to fill up two and that third bunk there will be maybe halfway through. That way we'll have a, a lot of carry over and we won't have to start feeding the new silage right away. Silage. So I'm not even sure if these cows graze. Maybe they do, but it looks like there's such a massive amount of feed that these cows, I don't know, maybe they see a field. Maybe they never see a field. I don't know. We try to pull off any mold that we can. Uh, any toxins that are in the feed can cause issues with the cows. The Sometimes it can make them sick or it won't be as noticeable, but it'll hurt the breeding. The conception rate will drop, which is costly. And so anything costly you know this there's no other issue with that okay i think that's all see this is like cool stuff like fixing a tractor i can totally dig that you know but it's what are you using the tractor for working at this 2940 here uh, the leak was I love me a 2940 for those that don't know i actually live in iowa surrounded by by uh cornfields and stuff so this is this is very neighborly for me uh Quick wash it I'm now. just skipping tractor here. stuff. There's just so much tractor stuff. Just washing his tractor. <laughs> you gotta keep your tractor sexy. That's the reason. I'm running between the corn rows a lot. It uh, gives me a little more visibility if I take them off. I don't know corn, if it's necessary. Corn rows. So it looks like they might be farming, doing their own farming for the operation. So yeah, he has fertilizer. He's about to fertilize this cornfield to, I assume, mostly, maybe they sell some of it, but probably to be feeding these dairy cows. And we have another small four acre field. And that's a lot of land. At this point, it's worth mentioning just how much feed is wasted. We use up to half the world's grain to feed livestock. That is completely crazy. And from this paper right here, as they mention, only less than 10% of calories are going to make it into milk or other animal products in terms of, you know, calories out or protein out. So that is a total just waste in terms of thermodynamics. And we have 300, at least 300 million hungry people on the planet. So that's something, something to think about. We're putting, what we're putting on is urea, which is nitrogen. And so they're putting synthetic uh, nitrogen on. And it has a stabilizer product on it to help it stick around rather than just evaporating. And this is why, this reminds me of people who go and they see all these corn fields, they see soybean fields going, oh, that, all that corn is being, being used to, you know, make tortillas or all that soy is going to tofu for vegans. No, the reality is that it's a very small percentage that's going to actually feed humans directly. And looking at this map based off USDA data, we're using a, almost half, about half of the lower 48 land to either graze or grow feed for, like in this situation for livestock. So that is, <laughs> that's where our resources are going right there. All right, so I just skipped through a bunch of just talking about corn and riding the tractor and and he played a little bit of basketball and it looks like there's some cows here again. Look at that, they're living on like metal and concrete. Not cool at all. We're out here in the barn. There's one in pen too, a fresh heifer that was only here for about a week. 
she's not doing too well. So we're gonna take her back to the special needs and we put a new heifer out here. Uh, at this point, it's worth mentioning that in order to be producing milk, these cows need to be continually impregnated. In this situation, uh, just judging by the scale of this, I'm guessing it's through uh, artificial insemination with the needle. So forced impregnation, which I, <laughs> I hope you don't think is ethical. Maybe you do. It's messed up though. And from this USDA report, 97% of calves are removed from their mothers within the first 24 hours of life. That's considered the more humane option. Uh, just by default, this industry is not pretty. So. After this, I'll, I'm gonna sweep up here a little bit. We like to sweep up the middle of the barn, keep it clean. So it looks like this is how he feeds him. He just takes a, a bucket and spreads the, uh, the feed across that little tile strip. I mean, this is a factory farm. If you don't think this is a factory farm, you're kidding yourself. All I need yet is a nice cold beverage. What is this? It's not milk, that's water, that's crap. How are you even drinking that? I guess I should at least try it. <laughs> he thought water was crap too. <laughs> That's better. I will say a lot of corn does go to high fructose corn syrup, so it's getting it that way too. So I will say this guy, he probably does some hard, some hard work, you know, with his hands, but like a lot of it, most of it's been sitting in a tractor. So it makes sense why we can still have such an aging farming population. Farmers are getting older and older and older, and that's because we're automating more and more, at least semi-automated. So I was wrong, he doesn't spread it with a bucket. There's so much of it that he literally has a tractor that feeds it. I'm wondering, is this where the cows actually live their whole lives? Right there, in these, in these pens. I, he hasn't shown them anywhere else. Cows are fed. I'm done for the day. I actually had a request for you guys. If you like my videos, make sure you hit the like button. All right, video looks like it's about over. The like to dislike ratio is really good on this, and that clearly shows that people are, you know, open to glorifying dairy farming. And obviously he's not sharing the worst parts of what's going on. <laughs> But uh, I want to look down in the comments. Don't know why this is my recommendation. It was in my recommendation as well. That's funny. Backbone of every country. Yes, yeah, so you can tell people people who love drinking milk are here to definitely feel better about their habits. Absolutely. You drink unpasteurized milk. So yeah, this, you're now on the FBI's top one list. So yeah, he was drinking unpasteurized milk. And so there was a, a risk of infection there. Oh, here's a funny comment. Another excellent video. I bought whole milk this weekend because of you. Why? I mean, I, I didn't see him talk about why whole milk is better, but whole milk, for those that don't know, is 3.25% uh, fat instead of 2%. A lot of people drink 2%. And quick reminder that dairy is the main source of saturated fat in the U.S. diet. And, you know, for meta-analysis like this on controlled feeding trials, raises cholesterol, which, as you probably already know, and I have many videos on, is causally linked to heart disease, our number one killer. So... So I wanna, I'm interested really quickly because that video is literally him in a tractor most of the time. What other videos there are on his channel? So what's one that, okay, yeah, some of these Monday chores. It seems to just be him doing stuff. Okay, so it's funny that we're not seeing any uh, artificial insemination. Uh, obviously they probably don't do the slaughtering there, but male calves born at this industry, born on their farm, have no place there. So they're probably sent off to become beef, but spraying alfalfa and moving baby calves. I just wanna see what's going on with the baby calves here. Let's look for some baby calves. I'm assuming this is the process of separating them from the mothers. He probably just didn't show, you know, the the often screaming cow mom being like, stop taking my baby away. So now the baby is separated from the mom in this tiny little pen with uh, metal corrugated sheets on each side. And so the cycle continues. 
So it was as simple as him just literally moving the calves, but the reality is he didn't show them taking the calves away from their mothers. They didn't show what happens to the male calves. They didn't show the artificial insemination that is required, at least on a think this scale, to continue the operations. So I would have loved to hear him talk more about things, numbers, and, and what his views are, because that way I could actually respond directly to his claims and his viewpoint. But even just seeing the operation, getting, you know, an eye-opening view at that, uh, it just shows that we even still want to glorify factory farms and just just the basic principles, the math on it, on these farms, you just can't do it without, you know, crazy levels of animal exploitation, which I hope you don't believe are ethical. If you do, uh, I would reconsider that. You know, cows are roughly as sentient as dogs. I mean, imagine a bunch of dogs just lined up in those, you know, feeding pens and then going and get milked and, you know, so if you care about dogs, then you should definitely care about care about those cows. But beyond the ethical aspect, it's very clearly a glimpse into a system where we're throwing away 90% or more of calories that we need. We need these calories to feed humanity, we're using land all wrong, and we're, don't even get me started on going the grass-fed direction and the methane emissions from that. It's not fun. I'm actually going to do an upcoming video on the greenhouse gas emissions from the U.S. if everybody went carnivore. So it'll be fun. Stay tuned for that one. And it's one thing to just watch what somebody's doing, point at their job and say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. But I do think it's really important to be presenting options that are farming in a different way. I think hemp is going to be the future alternative farming for a lot of these uh, animal farmers. So I can't wait until that's legalized. You know, we have so many potentials with that. We have, you know, the biofuel, the bioplastics, and of course, how it's a food, textiles and so forth. And of course, the CBD stuff is at least right now, making a lot of money. So hopefully we can offer some alternatives to people like this instead of just saying, hey, what you're doing is wrong. So that's for today. Feel free to let me know down below what you thought about this. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that probably won't like this response video, people who like dairy, for example, but if you did like it, uh, let me know down below. And if there are any other videos like this you want me to respond to, so feel free to like as usual, subscribe, notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.